Um, good morning once again and welcome to this, the ninth of our uh, Bible studies that will take us across a year and introduce us to many of the genres of uh, writing in the scriptures. Today we come to the final um, quotation about creation. These, these are the creation stories, largely from the first chapters of the Bible. Today, day, day nine, we are looking at the struggle for survival which humans face outside of paradise. I'm going to be reading to you shortly from Genesis chapter 3 verses 14 to 19. I'll turn you around so you can see the text. Yahweh God said to the snake, I will make you and the woman hate each other. Her offspring and yours will forever be enemies. Her offspring will crush your head, and you will bite her offspring's heel. To the woman he said, I will multiply your difficulty in pregnancy, and giving birth will be painful. Nevertheless, you will desire your husband, but he will have power over you. To the man he said, because of what you have done, the ground will be under a curse. You will only eat from it after much hard labour every day that you live. It will produce weeds and thorns, and you will have to scavenge for wild fruits. You will only be able to eat bread by the sweat of your brow, until in the end you return to the earth from which you were made. You are dust, and it is to dust that you will return. This uh, Bronze Age philosopher and storyteller knows he is living in a world that will only give up its riches to humans if the humans put some effort in. Here he explains why he thinks pregnancy and childbirth are so risky, why nature seems to be the enemy of the human race, and why farming is such hard work. Echoing down through the ages, we have thoughts here that strike home afresh in the 21st century. For a long time, particularly um, urban and settled humans, have been at least a bit scared of nature and in awe of those who have farmed the land and kept herds of cows and sheep. In other places in the Bible, we find the same awe exists for those who mine the hills for minerals or risk their lives on the open water for fish, but nature is scary. In Scripture, there are descriptions of natural disasters that have threatened human survival. Well, this, as I said, brings us to the end of our series of readings about creation. I propose to show you over the next few days the different ways in which the Bible thinks about such things to see what we might learn. Um, we'll start tomorrow with a famed ecological disaster of epic proportions and then comb through the Old and New Testaments to see how the various writers interpreted other powerful threats. Uh, what might have been described by us, for example, as uh, a meteor strike, an eclipse, an unidentified aerial phenomenon, a volcanic eruption, a pandemic, a landslide, a drought, a flood, several storms and possible tor a possible tornado. As we have seen in the story about the cunning snake, we humans have often found ourselves overwhelmed by the state we find ourselves in. When all else fails, we pray. For some, this might seem like the futile cry of, a, of the powerless to an uncaring universe. But to the faithful, facing dreaded threats to our survival, armed with faith and prayer, has raised our spirits and helped us to survive and persevere. Before they are locked out of paradise, 
The story of the first man and the first woman ends with them being named Adam, man, and Eve, mother. And God still cares about them. Yahweh improves on their flimsy fig leaves by making for them robust clothes out of leather. Adam named his wife Eve because she was to be the mother of the human race. And Yahweh God made clothes out of animal skins for Adam and his wife, and he dressed them in them. And now it is out into the big wide world for the human race. We now know for sure that we are mongrels. Humans probably arose in Africa, which was uh, our paradise garden. Along the way, we very probably interbred with our immediate predecessor and fellow humans, the Neanderthals and the Denisovians, which were sophisticated in their own ways. Their DNA can be detected in the cells of our bodies. They too appreciated beauty. They struggled with the world to survive in it. They had the brains for sophisticated speech and may well have told each other stories and they buried their dead with care, as modern humans do. Before the invention of writing, all storytelling and philosophizing was preserved only in thought and speech. We cannot know much about primitive humanity's ideas of the meaning of life, but the care with which they buried their dead gave us some ideas about their reverence for life and even their appreciation for ritual and ceremony. As we grow in knowledge about the facts of human evolution, we can be grateful that all the way through there have been people who wanted answers to the big questions, including where it all came from. God's struggle against Leviathan was one attempt at understanding the world, Adam and Eve another, and the seven days of creation another. They all have important things to say about us and our nature, and remain worth reading with our 21st century eyes open. Thank you. See you tomorrow when we're going to start looking at some disaster stories and natural wonders that are recorded in the words of Scripture.